Welcome to this video which is going to show you how you can use Autotest Pro in a test driven development methodology um, way. Now I'm going to record this video completely live so to show that there's no editing or cutting in this uh, we're going to run this uh, stop clock here so that you can see it's a continuous video. Really a simple demonstration we've got loaded into Autotest Pro already um, a create incident uh, user story here. So we're creating a help desk incident from a call, we're reassigning it to a particular group, we're closing the incident and then we're checking it's resolved. And we want to amend the incident form to uh, include a new field uh, at the request of a user. We want to record that, um, we want to record, let's say a silly example, but let's record the eye colour of the caller. Uh, and we want that to be a choice selection box uh, of different colors of eyes that the uh, the user can select. So how would we do that in a test-driven methodology? Well, the way we do that is to amend this uh, user story with a new requirement. So let's have a look at this user story. So we open it up and we can see here that we're following this user story through. And what we want to do is to add a new field after step 40, which will record the eye color. So we just click on new. We want to insert it after 40 and before 45. And we want to be, do a select choice. And um, now, because this new field doesn't exist on the uh, in the database at the moment, we can't select it from the uh, incident table. Uh, so we click this box here called New Requirement, and we say which table we want that uh, field to be on, and we give it a name that says called I underscore color, and then we give it some choices. So maybe blue, gray, and brown. Let's just keep it really simple and uh, we submit that. So let's put a description here. Select the eye color of the caller raising the incident. And we submit that. Now what that would do is you can see here that it's told us that it's created a development task for us. It's created some acceptance criteria. And if we now look at the story, we've got a step here in step 45, and it's raised a development task for a developer to go off and create that test. Now, in true test-driven development uh, methodology, we should be able to run that test, that scenario, and the test to fail. So if we switch into here and create a test run for this, We will see, let's just set that to ready for auto test, save that, and go to test runs, initiate the test run. That uh, particular test should fail because we haven't made that change, and that's true test driven development. We define the test before we make the change to the system. So uh, what I'll do is just um, go into here and you can see that this test is already running. Let's open up the uh, server where this is running to uh, view the actual test executing. Now the key with test driven developments, just while this is opening up and showing you uh, the test executing on the server, key to test driven development is that that test should fail at the point where that field doesn't exist. And whilst that uh, test is executing on the server, I'll just show you the development task that's been created. So here we've got the uh, development task created on 28. You can see here that this task was uh, to select choice with values. Incident is the table name, eye color, and we want choices blue, gray, and brown. And at the moment, this uh, development task is pending. Uh, you've got all the normal uh, fields you'd expect to managing development tasks, such as backlog, who you want to assign this to, and so on. And we've got the acceptance criteria for this, which is choice is selected. So 
them back to here. Um, we can use the uh, visual task board functionality within ServiceNow to manage that uh, task through the different phases. We've got here, we've got to select eye color choice. Let's say we want to put that to work in progress because it's uh, being developed by a developer. We can move those things around and we can assign them to different people. Let's go and watch how the test is uh, progressing. So it's uh, here's the uh, the test actually progressing, and we're obviously we're expecting this to fail first of all. So it's just filling in the uh, the work notes field and submitting that request, that incident. I'm sorry. Uh, let's just close that down. Go back into test runs to see how this is progressing. Got execution in progress. Now we can see here that this test has failed. Let's drill down into see exactly what's gone wrong there. And we can see the step 45 has failed as you'd expect. This has not been developed yet as we've defined the test but not made the change in the system. So we can see here, select the eye color of the caller raising the incident is the, uh, is the user task that's um, Been executed at that point. Now it hasn't raised the defect for that because uh, it's not a defect. We're expecting that to fail at this point, um, but it has highlighted that that is uh, needs to be done. So let's follow this through logically as we would do. So we we'll have this development task here, and we're going to assign that to myself to go and do that piece of work. In the system, actually, um, let's just put in. Let's put in Wayne. I'm not sure why that's not working. Why are we not getting assignment groups? Okay, let's let's assign that to somebody here. Uh, let's assign it to Fred. Fred is going to go and make this change, and um, we'll say it's work in progress. And we can manage this through as a normal. Uh, as a normal change. So let's save that. Fred's now working on this particular development. Now, what does he need to do? He needs to go and add a uh, new field to the create incident form. So, so to create new, and we uh, need to add a new field so we can configure the form. And we want to add a new field of my color to this form and its choice. And we're going to add that in. We're going to put it up underneath the caller field and save that. Good. So we made the change that we need. Uh, we've got eye color. We haven't got any choices there, so uh, let's configure the choices. And we want to add blue, gray, and brown. And this is following the uh, details of the from the development task that I've been sent. So I click on save there, and now we can see that we've got blue, gray, and brown as options to select. So I've made the change, so I'm going to go back to my development tasks. And I'm going to, actually let's do this using the, uh, the visual task board. That's quite a nice way of doing it. So uh, we'll click under here, show visual task board. And we're going to move this one into close complete. Fred's done his work on that. And we can then see that's now showing as close complete. And part of the work that Fred should do uh, in completing that activity, which I should have done before marking it as complete, is also go into the uh, appropriate scenario where that test was changed and test was defined. 
So I'm opening up this scenario and I'm opening up that task where that was defined and now because I've made this change it's no longer a new requirement so I untick this new requirement box and I select the actual field rather than the test one so you can see here I've got three, I've got blue, gray, and brown. I'm gonna go for gray colored eyes, and I'm going to update that. I also need to make sure that the acceptance criteria is correct. So just need to amend the check for the verification. And this is no longer a new requirement either. So I need to change that to the uh, I'm checking incident, eye color, and gray. Update that. So I've replaced the placeholder for that check and that uh, action with uh, the actual values now. So this should now pass rather than fail. So I'm going to go back to the uh, epic and I'm going to copy this test run and oops, that's the wrong selection. Manage help designs with change made. So just so we can identify the two different um, test runs and their results. So we've got that in there now. And I'm going to initiate this test. Um, you can see here that this uh, status is, was changed to executed with new requirements. So it had, it's, it's identified that um, it was executed uh, with requirements. And so you can see that the failure here was due to uh, new requirements rather than actual failure of the test. A really important um, way of being able to distinguish between the two. Now uh, we've run the test through so let's go and have a watch of it executing because it's quite fun to watch it on the server. Uh, it's just bringing up that screen for us. Uh, it's just got to the point where it's created a new. We can see the new field on there now has uh, been added, the eye color field. And it just pauses here, it's doing a number of different checks of this form, um, checking that fields are mandatory uh, and read only, and um, checking that certain values are, uh, are available in the choice lookup. So there's a number of pre-validations. And there now it's um, storing the incident number and it's filling in the caller field. And this is the new bit now, which is testing that uh, it can select gray. And you can see there that all is well there. And, uh, and then it proceeds with the next part of the test. Let's go back to the results because we will be able to see those results coming in now. And we can see, if we drill down on here, that the select gray from the eye color is now a pass test. Uh, so we've defined the requirement. We've um, seen that the test has failed as you would do with test-driven development. We've made the development change, managing it through the development task process. We've rerun the test. We've shown that that has uh, then successfully passed the tests. And uh, so the change is complete and that release can be uh, made into production at that time. So we're 13 minutes into, or 14 minutes into the demonstration. We've shown how we can use Autotest Pro to uh, define a new requirement and meet that new requirement through some development. And um, hopefully that has been useful in understanding the capabilities of Autotest Pro and uh, using it in test-driven development mode. Uh, it doesn't need to be used in this way. This is an option. Um, it can be used in a waterfall style methodology or agile and scrum. Um, and uh, so the option is there if you wish to use it. It's uh, quite an advanced way of using uh, Autotest Pro, but uh, it's there if you require it. Thanks for watching the video and uh, goodbye.